Big Cat, Big Riz. I'm, well, somehow I'm gonna come up with some type of cool, you know, actual like show name for that. But let me go ahead and just use real names right here. I'm Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media. This is Riley Davis of Heat Check CBB. Of oh, the pod is the roof. I mean, the kid is everywhere. Of Riley Fridays on Sleepers Media. Riley, how we doing, sir? Doing well. Always a pleasure to talk some hoops, particularly of the ACC variety, because we have dubbed ourselves the ACC correspondents of Sleepers Media. Uh, unlike that third member who neglects this great league, who who partakes in the besmirching of this conference with the national media. See, we're I really, talking. I, I really hope that my faith in this in this conference doesn't come back to bite me. But I will be there if somehow it does, and I will stand on ten toes, and I will do like Drewski said, and I will stand on business about it. Just so you know. Hey, well, at least the two teams we're talking about on this one, one has been really good over the last month. The other has had flashes of like, I was going to say both are good teams, but let's be real. One's playing well right now. The other has been on a bit of a nosedive really over the past, what, three weeks now? Duke, Virginia. What are your thoughts on this matchup, Cart? Uh, well, one, I feel like this is a game that is always, just always a good game. Like, I mean, you know, it, obviously Virginia doesn't have the firepower that they've had in past years. I mean, Whenever I think about this game, obviously you think about those matchups with the Zion teams and the Jay Huffs of the world mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, just all those other guys that were uh, at Virginia. But, you know, this Virginia team now, I might be wrong on this one. It's been it's been a couple of days since I checked the bracket matrix, but I don't think that Virginia is right now is currently at least safely in the field. So this is a this is a classic game like at the start of March where you have despite what their talent is you have a great coach in Tony Bennett who knows that who knows how to get teams in the tournament and he knows how to win games when he needs to win games and this is a prime opportunity for them to pick up a big win against a Duke team that you know if you ask somebody besides yourself Riley being a UNC fan uh there's a lot of people that are saying like this Duke team is final four bound so where, where are you at on this matchup and you know how this Duke team is playing uh especially with the return of their fallen superstar from his egregious injury yeah i uh i i would not be surprised if this duke team makes the final four let me get that out uh, let me say that on the front end i'll take off my carolina blue and argyle glasses and and be a little unbiased here they've been playing exceptionally well since the loss at unc um they've won and covered all but one of their games and that was at wake forest last week so um i think per torvik's metrics like over the past month they've been playing like the seventh best team in the country and they're sort of getting to that to that rank on the year as well um this virginia team on the other hand their defense is still top 10 and they can still take you out of rhythm they don't have that like dynamic rim protector like the jay huffs like the mama dd akites like the uh anthony gills of the world that um, or Isaiah Wilkins, who would just make life miserable down low. Um, but Jordan Minor can hold his own in the paint. And then, of course, uh, any guard is going to have to deal with Reese Beekman. That's going to be the main matchup to watch whether, you know, I, I would guess Beekman's going to see time on both Jeremy Roach and Jared McCain. Uh, he, hopefully he can keep, well, I, I say hopefully, just show my bias there. Hopefully he can keep at least one of those dudes in check because uh, if either one of them gets hot, I mean, we saw it last week when, Carolina went to Charlottesville and Cormac Ryan hit five threes in the first half and the game was pretty much over. It, like yeah. if either yeah. one of those dudes get hot and starts making five, six threes in a, I mean, yeah, in a half that can completely swing it. And Virginia just doesn't have the offensive firepower to get back in the game. Yeah. But here's the one thing for me that I can't shake or is with this Virginia team, though they might lack the star power and the like actual name brand of the guys you said. I mean, obviously they had the Beekmans. Ryan Dunn is a projected first round pick, more of a project at this point, but you can see the, you can see the skills there. The one thing that I think you can say about this Virginia team, at least in my opinion, is that one, the defense is always there. The competition, the competing is there and this team is tough. And myself being one of these one of these people that throw out this narrative is that I love this Duke team I actually do I don't know if this Duke team is necessarily tough do you see a world where you know Virginia just gets up in Duke makes them uncomfortable gets them out of rhythm and like you know things aren't going well and they kind of just maybe put a little bit of muscle on this Duke team I mean there's a chance like if you look at the history I think oddly enough Tony Bennett has a there's 
Like Duke has a pretty good record in Charlottesville in JPJ, which is a really tough place to win. But Bennett's been able to steal a couple in Cameron. It most recently was the 2022 season where Virginia was an NIT team. They finished 72nd on Kempom and were able to get a one point victory in Cameron. So we have seen, uh, and remember that was a Duke team that did make a final four with Paulo Bancaro, AJ mm-hmm. Griffin, uh, Trevor Keels. I'm sure Mark Williams probably forget another players, but like we've seen the blueprint before where a Virginia team that, lacks the star power that lacks the talent be able to flex the muscle a little bit and i also feel pretty foolish for neglecting to mention ryan dumb when i was talking about their interior defense my bad virginia fans i promise i watch your team i just had a mental lapse but um yeah uh, there's a world where it's happening but this duke team just seems like there's on such a heater offensively where it's it's not just Roach and McCain who are draining three. Somehow Mark Mitchell shooting like 50% from three in league play granted i think it's on 12 attempts but still um like they they can get offense. I know Caleb Foster's probably going to miss this game, which I think is a big blow. But they've just had other guys step up and in, in moments. Whether it's I mean Sean Stewart's been getting some minutes off the bench for them. Jalen Blake's has his moments every once in a while. So yeah, that's that is. I mean maybe Virginia throws the first punch and can hold them under like. 15 points for the first 10 minutes or something. And they're able to hang around and get enough plays to, you know, build a little lead or something. But I I don't know. It's kind of tough for me to envision that. Yeah. Especially with the way Duke's offense is hitting on all cylinders. I think you pointed it out. This Virginia team's not coming back against anybody. They just don't have the offensive firepower to do so. Cameron's going to be rocking. They're going to be, you know, that place is going to be packed. I think they're going to get out to a fast start guys that maybe necessarily struggle to shoot sometimes once you get in that home arena, there's nothing like shooting in it. I know how that goes. I don't even know why I said I know how that goes. Like, I was a three-point shooter. I actually don't know how that goes whatsoever, <laughs> even though my two career threes were both home threes, I believe. So, yes, hey, you, you, you do know how it goes. Like you Give yourself like, that credit. You feel that You feel that home <laughs> energy in there. So, that's something that's definitely going to be a part. And, you know, for – the credit we give Ryan Dunn for being an interior defender. Let's, you know, let's honestly keep it a buck though. Like Filipowski is, is different down low. Uh, Mitchell is also like that front court is a lot to handle. You got to have a front court that can be up to the challenge with that. I think that Virginia's front court has improved. I don't think they're anywhere close to Duke's front court. Um, And, you know, I think Duke is also a team that because they dropped that Wake Forest game too, I think they kind of got, they got their eyes on the prize right now. Like they're everything right now, is leading to that path where they where UNC comes to Cameron, I believe, right at the mm-hmm. end of the year. Yeah, they would. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. um, they need so UNC's one game ahead in the standings. They need either UNC to lose one of these two games, or if UNC wins out and Duke beats them, like they they have to beat UNC to get a share of the ACC title. Or if they yeah. beat UNC and UNC drops another, then they can right. So right, so they're they're, they're on a mission to handle their business. They got to do what they got to do. Um, and you know, if this game was in Charlottesville, like I, I feel a little bit weirder about it, but at home mm-hmm. at Cameron, I, I think that Duke is going to stay focused and get it done for all I said, but I just want to let it be known this Duke team soft, Riley. I don't care what anyone says when they go out in the tournament because they are being soft, it might be in the final four. I still don't care. It's cause they're being, <laughs> all right. I just want that to be known. That's really the point that I want to get out about this, pre- this preview. You know, I do think like th- there's a chance with the the way Virginia does those big to big doubles that you can neutralize Filipowski, and I, I he's the one who, like again, I I've been beating this drum for the past two months. Like McCain is not the one I'm worried about. That dude shows up every game. He has a penchant for hitting big shots, it, and even Roach, I think he's grown a ton in his consistency this year. He's shooting like 48 percent from three. But Filipowski is the one who we have seen uh, sort of. That's what I'm looking for, like waver a little bit or so, sort of drift like in and out of big games. Um, and you get you have to deal with Ryan Dunn and Jordan Minor doubling you. And I know he's a good passer, but you know, again, this is still a top 10 defense that doesn't they don't have the NBA athletes and the length that the best Tony Bennett teams have had, but they're still able to get deflections out of like yeah, if flip is passing out of double teams there's still going to be reese beekman who's roaming passing lanes looking for a chance to get a live ball turnover like the only time we ever see virginia run so yeah that to me would be the blueprint is just make life tough on filipowski hope that beekman can contain mccain and that i guess isaac mcneely or andrew roadie whoever it is just closes out 
hard on uh, Jeremy Roach to keep him from going off too. Cause yeah, that's, it's kind of the only way you're going to get it done. Yeah. And unfortunately I think that, that might just be asking too much of the boy. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I agree. It's a down I year agree. for Virginia. Uh, you know, it's, it's one that they haven't had in a while. Uh, I think it's just asking too much of them um, at home for Duke at Cameron. I, I kind of see this as an easy win. Uh, I'm not mm-hmm. sure what the, what the, what Ken Palm currently has it at, but like, to me, this this has the makings of a double digit win. Mm-hmm. Kim Palm has a spread, uh, Duke minus eleven. I think it's either going to be like a five point game or it gets ugly and Duke wins by 17, 18, somewhere in that range. Okay, so you, you say that. So where do you have it though? You got an ugly side. I have it. Yeah, I got it the ugly side. I think got it ugly, okay. by like seventeen. <laughs> All right, so both of us have an ugly side. And is, Riley, is there some party? This is how I end this. Is there some part of you that you want them to win because you want that last game of the season to like kind of mean something? Like you want, like you want to like shut the door on the share if they have. No, a I'm I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm You're good on that. I'm good on that meaning something. My ideal world is Duke drops one of these next two games, UNC wins them both, and has the ACC locked up going into Cameron. The boys okay. will be able to play loose. Like I, you on. know what? I feel the exact same way. I just <laughs> throw it out there. Maybe you want to just manufacture something for that last game. I just I, I had to ask. <laughs> like I said, pass. Uh, I don't know if there's ever been a, cha- a time I wanted Duke not to lose. So, but to be a, only, yeah, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Yeah, and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong about that. But uh, we will be back on the channel to recap this game um, for Riley Davis, Carter Elliott. We'll see you on the recap.